who says Sammy dead in three parts for the escaped monkey. Part one, Sammy plant piece of corn down a gully. Tell them the corn wasn't really corn, but something you seeded, like maybe a dreadlock from your rebel days in Honduras, hidden in soil, so one day you'd remember the fire, the anger that some cities are worth burning. This was before they reeled you with wind. This was before they reeled you in with fishnet and had you thrashing a let me go jungle dance, khaki men clapping, dance, monkey dance while you were bawling murder. Or maybe the corn was your navel string. Call it what you will. It was planted in a gully that wasn't a gully, but it's so Babylon call our homes cause it's not theirs. Sammy, como se dice home in Espanol? Part two, and it bear till it kill poor Sammy. Tell them the tree once planted will bear the thought you forgot on Dora's thought you'd grown accustomed to the monotonous grid of iron to St. Thomas, bananas and the flat non-music of our dialect. They thought you were content making monkey faces as straight for Snickers and lollipops, content passing collection hats for blind organ grinders, content to scratch your balls on camera. Tell them, Sammy, how you finally heard the tree humming at night, how Oh, you've been jungle dreaming and memories that died in your prison have risen like Lazarus zombie arms to choke you these past nights you woke crying for mama crying for mambo and merengue and garifuna crying in espanol libertad libertad para mi part three sami dead sami dead sami dead oh tell them your death is not really death cause wasn't no shame in it shame is breath expired behind bars while your brothers find eternity in the jaws of cougars your death is not death only the separation of fur from spirit the ability to fly a monkey dream in espanol homecoming party la fiesta your death is amen and amen it is the swell up of change the bursting it is dugu it is kumina it is beyond Bienvenidos a Honduras otra vez. A Jose Sami dead. A Jose Sami dead. Tell them, tell them, Mino dedo. The color of the singer man's songs. If the singer man had gone to America, he would have sung the blues. He would have sung the blues with a voice like John the Baptist with a tongue covered in sand and his blues would have been that kind of blues that is fed on locust and honey blues like a cry that cometh from the wilderness blues like the sound of warthogs alarmed at the sky and the singer man would have sung it straight from his field in Arkansas to Harold Arlen's sitting room and Arlen would have gone to the keys to write a song more sad than blues in the night but the singer man did not go to America he stayed right here so bless up to him and his song and all music that is sad in its own color bless up to the notes that fall like flakes of rust bless up to every song that makes its own way out of dongle a path straight through ghettos bless up to the mental which becomes ska which becomes rubber dub which becomes legend bless up all the red gold songs all the weary evening time songs songs given to us by the singer man the collection that I'm going to read from now is a collection called the cartographer tries to map a way to Zion and that's all it, it, it imagines a cartographer in Jamaica trying to get to Zion and these are some of the conversations he has between himself and Aristamanda the epigraph is one you would know from the Psalms. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are said of thee, O city of God. Selah. 1. The cartographer explains, my job is never to lose myself exactly, but to imagine what loss might feel like. 
the sudden turtle's pace, the consultation with trees and blue fences and whatever else might prove a landmark. My job is to imagine the widening of the unfamiliar and also the widening ache of it, to anticipate the ironic question, how did we find ourselves here? My job is to unconfuse the confused, to untangle the tangled, to guide you out from cul-de-sacs and dead ends into which you may have wrongly turned. Two. The Rasta man has another reasoning. He says, now that man's job is never straight, forward or easy. Him work is to make thin and crushable. All that is big and real as ourselves is to make flat. All that is high and rolling is to make invisible and worthless. Plenty of things that poor people can't do without, like board houses and the corner shop from which Miss Katie sells her famous peanut porridge. And then again, the map maker's work is to make visible plenty things that should have never exist in the first place like the conquest of pirates like borders like the viral spread of governments three the cartographer says, no, what I do is science. I show the land as it is without bias. I never fall in love. I never get involved with the muddy affairs of land. Too much passion unsteady is the hand. My aim is to show the full of a place in just a glance. Four. The Rasta man thinks, draw me a map of what you see, and I will draw a map of what you don't see. And guess me whose map will be bigger than whose. Guess me which map will tell the larger truth. Five. The cartographer has been sent into the island to draw a new and updated map of the mile roads and the bauxite roads, of the secret roads and the slaving roads and the brand new roads that have been cut into mountains to replace the landslide covered roads. And each day while burning red in the sun hot eating unsalted stews, exalted stews of gungo peas and callaloo, he has listened to his I foremans describe the nearby towns and the ways and chains they must trod to get there. But one morning soon, the cartographer will know his own feet's longings. One morning soon, he will hear Zion calling. Sometimes the cartographer gets frustrated when he asks an informant how to get to such and such a place. And the informant might say something like, all right, you know the big house at the bottom of Clover Hill with all the windows then board up and up. I shingle roof that look almost like a church. Yes, the cartographer says. And in front of the house, you always see an old woman only three teeth in her mouth and she out there selling pepper shrimp in a school chair with an umbrella tied to it. And beside her, she always have two mongrel dogs and one of them is white and another one is brown. Yes, I know exactly where you mean, the cartographer says. And in the yard, there's a big guinea tree that hang right out to the road. So school put in the always stop there to buy shrimp and eat free guinea. Yes, yes, the cartographer insists. I know it. Good, says the eye farmer, because you must go there. <laughs> Seven. At other times, the cartographer is amazed by the hems and haws and shrugs of our roads, how they never run shore but seem to arc or bend or narrow, just so an avenue will turn on itself as if to give you back to a place you have just come from. Lady Musgrave's road was laid in its serpentine way so that Miss Musgrave on her carriage ride home would not have to see a nigger man's property so much bigger than her husband's own. She did not want to feel the carriage slow and know her driver had just then turned his face to Devon House, a thing wet like pride in his eyes and nodding to himself, yes, is Miss Astibel build that and to think that such spite, a white woman's fear of a black man's endowment, should be passed down even to the present generation, should dictate the thoughtless, ungridded shape of our city, the slowness of traffic each evening, to think that one woman's pride should add so much 
wish to our daily commute. This is something the cartographer does not wish to contemplate still. He wonders if in his map he could make our roads a little smoother, a little straighter, as if in drawing he might erase a little bit of our history's disgrace. Eight. In time, the cartographer will learn the strange ways and names of this island. Doppigate, Tollgate, Sawasaptern, Hoghole. We'll know the zigzag routes through Portmore, the long and short of three miles and six miles and nine miles whose distances do not relate to each other. The cartographer will learn the path to Minasen, you know, come even to a compound. We'll know how to guide you out of shambles, rat trap, and put together corner. The, we'll know the slow that goes to wait a bit, the rough and pro to boldness or blackness, the struggle that takes you up to effort. The cartographer will know places named after places, Bethlehem, Tel Aviv, Gaza, Spain, Aberdeen and Cairo. But when the cartographer asks, where is this Zion? Can someone please tell me? The Rasta man shakes his head, my brother, now that is a place that can't reach easy. Nine, the cartographer whose job you will remember was never to lose himself exactly, is losing himself tonight. Amongst the eye farmers, he is smoking a chillum pipe and learning the ease of flight and what a vantage point to see this island by how her skin is pimpled with green hollocks, how the hollocks are feathered with bamboo leaves, how flames of the forest burn amongst cashew trees, but how the river is now choked with debris and a rotting carcass, how the fields are now brown with bagasse, how a woman stumbles through the hurting night, blade wedged into her back, how birds and bullets pack the purple band of evening and sing the sky to black. Ten. The Rasta man, also ascending the higher heights of reasoning, says, Map was just a language. Oh, by the way, just quick, quick. Lorna Goodison has a poem, and in it, it this is one of her hearties' poems. There's a line that she says, um, we with the straight eyes and no talent for cartography always asking how far Hearties is. And later on in the poem she says, Hearties, Hearties Sem, um, you can read map even if you're born a jubilee and grow with your granny and eat crackers for your tea. Just to say that that's reference in there, it's not my lines originally. Right. Ten. The Rasta man also ascending the higher heights of reasoning says, Map was just a language written against I and I who never know to read it. I and I who born a jubilee and grow with I granny and eat crackers for IT. I who had no talent for cartography. Map was just Babylon's most cryptic orthography. Better I and I never learn to understand the down presser's pig Latin. I and I who will I tenually bon fire for the down presser, bon fire for pig and bon fire for Latin. <laughs> Eleven. The cartographer sucks his teeth and says, every language, even yours, is an incomplete map of this world. It is like a man who never learned the word scroop, the sound of silk or chiffon against moving against a floor. Such a man does not know how to listen for the scroop of his bride's dress. And how much of life is like this, lands to which we have no access, how much have we not seen or felt or heard because there was no word for it or no word that we knew when we speak. We navigate ourselves away from dark corners and we become, each one of us, cartographers. So come to the end of this section, no worries. 13. I skip 12 if you realize. Why? No, because it don't finish right yet. Uh, 13. 
the thing is, there are maps, and then again, there are maps for what to call the haphazard dance of bees returning to their hives, but a map that leads to flowers, their soft and precise storehouses of pollen, and what to call the blood of hummingbirds, but a map to pulse tiny bodies across the labored breaths of ocean and then back. And what are turtles born with but a map to break their eggs and pull them up from the sand, pull them into ocean instead of towards land? And what is my midnight dream of flight but a map up and out of Babylon, a manual on how to ride Elijah's chariot to Zion? 14. So every night, while the cartographer expands on his network of slaving roads and old marooning roads, what he has been really concerning himself with is Zion. And a question that has wedged itself between his learning and his awakening. How do you draw a map to a place that is not quite a place? How do you draw towards the heart? 15. Put your ear to the ground. Listen for a sound beyond the asphalt or the marl. Listen like an arawak in search of deep water. And maybe you will hear the singer man's song. Yes, my brethren, our roads were mapped by the singer man. Put your ear to the ground and listen how we're raving and we're ranting and we're chanting revolution to a beer confusion day. Listen how we press along and we press along but we never get weary yet. Listen how is a mighty hard road we travel and a mighty long way to go but Jah Rastafari will lead we in the way we know. 16. The cartographer informs the Rastaman that he is now plotting a way to Zion. And the Rastaman shakes his head and says, Always this is the way with you people. My brother, you cannot plot your way to Zion. You can neither samphy your way to Zion, or jinal your way, or palm jack mandora, a pound or a dollar, and bribe your way in. You cannot climb into Zion on a Nancy's web, or get there by boat, or by plane, or by car. You have to walk good and tread holy. You have to pass through a place called crosses, and a town called turbulation, and only when Jah decides that you tread the distance that he set out for you to tread, with eyes in your mouth and cleanness in your heart, only then, my brother, Praise only the then. Lord. 17. And this is the last in this series. The rest of man says, to get to Zion, you must begin with a heart bliss, a small tilt of the head, a nod, thumbs and index fingers meeting to take the shape of eye blood, then raise like a badge to eye chest, then you say it, heart bliss. A simple word that don't cost nothing to give but is plenty to receive like sometimes you meet an Idrin who come not only with a gift from his own acreage but also a word how well you look, how prosperous, how beautiful the little children are, the house, how well appointed an Idrin with whom hours pass too quickly and who upon leaving offers yet another word how good it was to see you and for brethren and sisters to sit in the simple of each other's lives so that it strike you how both his coming and his going were announced by blessings my brother a man like that is already well on his way to Zion so begin like that a heart bless the old Rasta man's chanting up of goodness and rightness and of course upfulness how excellent is that word upfulness as if it was a thing that could be stored in the tank of somebody's heart so that on mornings when salt was weighing we down when we feel we can't even rise to face babylon's numbing work we would know at least that should the day ring our hearts out like the chamois toils of street boys then out of them would spring these stored portions of upfulness and so anointed by our own storage we would be able to face the road which is forever inclining hardward know then that every heart bless is collected by jar like mickle and muckle are like a basket full of cocoa and comes back to us 
like a dividend and then we will find our feet finally string off the mile roads and the bauxite roads the slaving roads and the marooning roads and we will be turning now onto the singing roads and the sweeting roads that take us to the place we seek distance distance is always reduced at night the drive from Kingston to Montego Bay seems not so far and neither the distance between ourselves and the stars and at night there is almost nothing between the things we say and the things we mean <laughs>